Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today I am sharing three easy and delicious crock pot meals with you. The first recipe that I'm going to share is a Mediterranean crock pot chicken recipe. I got this recipe from another fellow YouTuber. Her name is Brianna K. I'll link to her channel down below. So I will type this recipe out in the description box too so you can print it off, but what you'll need is some chicken breast. I pulled some out of the freezer that I had vacuum sealed for this recipe. You'll need some red onion, some garlic. I'm using some Greek seasoning, but you could also use oregano if you don't have that on hand. Some salt, some ground pepper. You'll also need some roasted red peppers in a jar along with some capers and some uh, Kalamata olives, or you could use green olives if you like, uh, some lemon juice, a packet of Italian dressing mix, and some olive oil. So to make this recipe, you'll first start out by mincing up your onion. You can go ahead and mince this up as big or as small as you'd like and put it in the bottom of your slow cooker. Today I'm using my Kasori multi-cooker. Uh, these are available on Amazon and this is one of my favorite kitchen tools. I do like it um, for some meals better than my crock pot because it has a keep warm function and it's programmable. So you can set it for a certain number of hours and then uh, it will automatically switch to keep warm. You can also use it to saute and boil things in. So I went ahead and put the onions in the bottom of the slow cooker. And then on top of that, I put my chicken breasts. Those are still partially frozen and that's fine. They will um, thaw out as they cook. On top of that, I sprinkled some of that Greek seasoning and some roasted red peppers, some capers, and some Kalamata olives. I'm using the Fresh Jack's Greek seasoning, which I've been loving for chicken and hummus. I'll link it down below. And I also have a discount code for their site if you're interested. The next thing that you'll do is make the dressing sauce that goes on top of the chicken. So I'm just squeezing the juice of one lemon into a small bowl and whisking that up with the packet of Italian dressing. And then you can just pour this all over the chicken and veggies and then drizzle it with some olive oil. So here's what it looks like when it uh, goes into the cooker for the day. This is actually like a really beautiful dish. I don't know why it just looks so pretty in there. So. I'm going to let this cook uh, all day on low heat for about 9 to 10 hours or alternatively you could cook it on high for 4 to 5. Okay, so here is what the chicken looks like after it has been cooking all day. This smelled delicious and it made the whole house smell like Greek food. It was so good. Uh, on the side, I made a, a quick salad. So just some lettuce and some salad toppings and I'm using the Olive Garden Italian dressing. So sort of my own copycat Italian uh, salad. And then I did make some pasta on the side for the kids to eat with it. Here's a look at my plate. So I had the salad with the chicken and I actually crumbled up some feta cheese on the top of mine, which I think actually made the dish. So if you make it, I would strongly recommend adding the feta if you like that. But yeah, this was our dinner tonight. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna show you how to make in your slow cooker is this Mexican beef stew. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you've probably seen me um, share this several times. We did get two dinners out of this. So here's a look at the recipe. It's um, on the site melaniemakes.com. So I'll link it down below, but I'm using some cut up chuck roast. The recipe called for stew meat, but I had a chuck roast in the freezer, so I went ahead and cubed that up. I'm also using a package of frozen corn. I have some cubed up potatoes that were just sitting in water overnight so that they didn't get brown so I could easily put them in the slow cooker the following morning. The recipe calls for pearl onions, but my kids aren't big fans of, you know, chunky onions, so I'm using some minced onion. You also need some oregano, some ground cumin, some salt, um, some pepper, and then also some crushed red pepper, which I went easy on because... Um, the kids were eating it and then also a couple cups of beef stock and then some fire roasted diced tomatoes. I'm going to use my immersion blender to um, crush up those tomatoes since I could not find the crushed tomatoes at my store and I almost forgot you also need some garlic so grab that too. 
So this is just before work on this particular day. I'm gonna put all the ingredients into my slow cooker. So I'm adding the potatoes and then I will add the cubed beef. This recipe is sort of like, I find it to be more of like a soup texture rather than a stew, but it does have like a nice sort of Southwest flavor. It's just a nice change up from like your regular, you know, beef stew or vegetable beef soup. So I'm sprinkling in all of the seasonings over the beef. Um, I'm not measuring the minced onion. Like I said, you could add, you know, regular chopped onion or pearl onions if you want. And then I'm going to add some beef stock. This is um, homemade beef stock that I keep in the freezer um, that I have made over the past couple months with um, using some beef scraps and some veggie scrap bags that I keep in the freezer. And then this particular sweet corn is from Trader Joe's. It's actually my favorite, so I always stock up on it when I go there. And then I'm just putting in those fire roasted tomatoes that I crushed up with my immersion blender. If you can find crushed fire roasted tomatoes, uh, you can go ahead and use those instead. So I'm just stirring everything up really well, making sure that it is all combined. And I did forget to add the garlic, so I'll be doing that here in a second. Just last week you called me The way you're talking is driving me insane Hello Just last week you called me one other important consideration is to always plug in your slow cooker, otherwise it won't be cooked <laughs> at the end of the day. So I did cook this on low all day long, probably for about 10 hours, and here is what it looked like when it was done. I cannot say enough good things about this recipe. The whole family liked it. It's not super spicy, but it does have kind of that Southwest flavor, so this will definitely be going in the regular rotation. Um, here is what Adam's plate looked like. Sorry for the lighting in this clip. I didn't turn my big lights on overhead but I just served this with some avocado on top and some pico de gallo and some tortilla chips and then I also made some quesadillas on the side. So the last slow cooker recipe that I'm going to share with you today is Italian beef sandwiches and I don't think I've ever shared this recipe before on my channel. I'll go ahead and type it out down below or find a similar one. I just made this so many times that I really don't reference a recipe anymore. Um, but for this, you will need either a chuck or a rump or an arm roast. So I'm placing that in my crock pot. And then on one side, I am going to sprinkle my ranch mix and my Italian dressing mix. And then I basically just um, sprinkle half of each packet on either side. Next, I'm gonna put in some beef broth. Again, I'm using some of the homemade beef broth that I had in my freezer and then one jar of pepperoncinis. This is what kind of gives it that spicy um, Italian beef flavor and that is it. It seriously could not be easier. You just put it on low, cook it all day and here is what it looks like when it is done. Now I've heard some people call this Mississippi roast I think. I don't know. I've seen that recipe going around on YouTube. I've never called it that. I've always just used this recipe for to make Italian beef sandwiches. So um, if you guys have comments on that or if you make it a different way, let me know. I know that there are some recipes that add a stick of butter. Personally, I don't think this dish needs any more fat than the fat you have from the beef. So you just saw me pulling out the meat and the peppers there and then I'm going to pour this into my fat separator. This is an OXO fat separator that I got on Amazon and I'll link it down below. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. So basically you'll just pour it in there and let the fat rise to the top see how it's going up to the surface there I don't really want a lot of that fat in my dish so that is the purpose of that so once the meat has cooled a little bit you can go ahead and um, shred it up you want to wait until it cools a little bit just because otherwise it will be too hot to handle this roast was really not one of my favorites I feel like it had a lot of connected tissue in it and so it was you know it was good and tender but it just took me longer to shred up so I'm just going to put that uh, back in my crock pot along with the pepperoncinis and then I'll pour the um, broth in over the top So you can see there as I'm pouring that broth back into the slow cooker, I'm just being careful not to get any of the fat in there. 
And that is how you keep all of that fat out of your roast. Uh, and that's also how you can make gravy too. So definitely a kitchen tool that I use, I would say on a semi-regular basis. It's not something I use, you know, every day or every week, but it definitely comes in handy. So I'm just stirring up the beef and the peppers, and then I'll just leave this on um, like low or keep warm until I'm ready to assemble the sandwiches. So what I like to do is get some um, Italian rolls or hoagie rolls and just spray them with a little bit of cooking spray. And I toast them in the oven just really lightly. And then I take the beef, I use a slotted spoon and try to squeeze some of the juice out of that so that my sandwiches aren't soggy. And I'm just putting that on the bread. So with Adam's, I did put some of the peppers in there with his, but I knew the kids probably wouldn't appreciate that. So on theirs, I'm just putting beef. Um, if you're doing low carb, you could definitely just eat this on a plate. You don't have to put it on bread. I've eaten it that way before, but um, it is really good with um, the toasted bread and then like dipped in some of the juice. So I'm putting some provolone cheese on top. Kira does not like cheese on hers, so that was hers that didn't have any cheese on it. But anyway, this is what we had for dinner tonight. We had the sandwiches with some roasted potatoes and some broccoli. Really delicious. So thanks so much for uh, watching this video. I hope that you got some ideas for some quick and easy crock pot meals for your own kitchen. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I will see you in my next video. Bye. I'm not